Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. Some of you might Twitter the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you with another Let's Play episode of... Sissel's Path. Yes, we're continuing down Sissel's Path. And uh, he actually got a new update. Sorry, I had to think about that real quick. I am uh, on 5 milligrams right now of the, the leafy green. And uh, even that is uh, pretty hard for me. Um, <laughs> stuff is really... I am really, really... Uh, not prepared for this stuff. Um, yeah, so I guess I just gotta get used to it. It's good for relaxation, but anyway, I'll just go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. Okay. All right. Cecil and I ended up taking a long, relaxing stroll around Bradley Lake. It sounded boring at first, but it was nice to spend time just leisurely chatting. Cecil also said something about coming here for old times' sake. Mm, sorry, guys. You know, I never had anyone. <clears throat> You know, I... <clears throat> what kind of voice should I still do for Cecil? I'm wondering if what I'm, one that I've been doing is appropriate for his character. Um, You know, I never had anyone to just relax and talk to you like this when I was younger. This is kind of nice. What were things like when you were younger, if you don't mind me asking? Pretty nosy, are you? Well, I guess I did bring the topic up. Eh, sorry. You don't have to tell me anything if you don't want to. No, it'd do me some good to talk about it. Just don't laugh, got it? Of course. Well, for starters, I lived here in my homeless days after I ran away from the West Orphanage. Here? At the lake? Specifically, that old cottage deep in the woods. It was abandoned and I needed a place to stay. Uh, the place might look creepy, but things are actually pretty cozy over there. Get me dry from the rain, at least. The old cottage, huh? My thoughts flickered back to the incident a few days ago. That abandoned wish showed up in front of the cottage, didn't it? Hey, Sissel... What were you saying? Why were you while you were staying at the cottage? Did anything odd ever happen to you? Like, um, ghosts and such? Sissel scoffed at me in disbelief. Dude, you've been listening to too much gossip. One second, guys. Okay. What? Did you hear about that bullshit ghost story about the Black Lady of Bradley Lake or whatever it's called? The what? It's an old local legend. People used to scare little kids away from the woods at night. It's a little about a singing dead lady looking for her child, which is ridiculous to even think about. Singing? Yeah, don't worry about it. I lived there for years. There was never anything particularly weird, and no people in general. Just me. There were some really pretty fireflies here at night, though. Maybe I could show you some time. Heh, <laughs> that sounds lovely. Mm -hmm, showing me fireflies in quotation marks. I know, what, I know what you kids call it these days. As the two of us continued our long walk, we found ourselves at the cottage in question. Sissel stared at the broken-down building for several long minutes with an air of nostalgia. You know, now that you brought up that ghostly shit, it kind of reminds me of something. What is it? My mind was still wandering after our conversation earlier. Is that black-haired lady I met a few days ago really a wish? If that were true, someone would have would have had to wish for her. She looked powerful, but so ragged and worn. Something odd happened here, I was sure of it. I turned my attention back to Sissel, who was scratching his head thoughtfully. First time I ever came to this cottage was on this rainy day. Oh, Aww, little Sissel! It was a few days after I ran away from the West Orphanage. Things were pretty rough. I hadn't eaten days and had nowhere to go. Everyone I ran into treated me like a street rat and chased me away. Honestly, it really felt like giving up then and there. So there I was, a little toddler all alone in the woods in the middle of pouring rain. There wasn't much hope for me. I don't remember what happened afterwards clearly, but... I remember there was a woman holding an umbrella. I didn't even notice her at first. She just stood there next to me without saying anything. After a while, she sort of motioned for me to follow her, and eventually she led me to the abandoned cottage. The place was old, but there was a lived-in feeling. There were dry towels and even some canned food that managed to keep going, keep me going for a while. Never saw her again, but if it weren't for that lady, I probably would have frozen or starved to death. You know, for some reason, I can't even vaguely remember what she looked like. What else she's doing now? Cecil stared at the cottage for a few more moments before chuckling to himself softly. What is it? I'm still kind of in shock. Just a few years ago, I was living in a broken town shack and starving to death. I'm going to school and making a living for myself. Time really flies, doesn't it? He turns to me with a slight smile on his face before throwing a friendly punch at my shoulder. 
I've uh, never really told anybody about this before. Uh, thanks for listening, Adrian. It means a lot to me. Anytime, Sissel. It warmed my heart to see him like this. Is this what it felt like to be trusted? I blinked at him oddly for a moment. A strange thought nagged at the back of my mind. Hey, Sissel, mind if I ask you something? What is it? I don't mean any offense when I say this, but you've been really nice to me ever since we met. Not that it's a bad thing. I really appreciate it, but it feels a bit unusual. It's just, why do you trust me so much even though we just met a week ago? Huh. Is it really hard to believe that you're a nice person? Sissel looked at me thoughtfully. I could feel his eyes scrutinize me for almost a full minute before he spoke. You know, now that you've mentioned it, I, you do remind me of someone I know. Someone you know? Yeah, a friend of mine. Well, more like a mentor, actually. You two look kind of alike. You've got the same color eyes and a thing for photography. You're both goofy as fuck, and I'm good at lending an ear to people who need it. Wow. Wow, you two are practically a spitting image of each other. Why haven't I seen it before? Spitting image? Suddenly, I felt the camera I hung around my neck almost exhale warmth against my chest. I held the camera in my hands, inspecting it carefully. Was it just my own pulse, or did the camera have a heartbeat of its own? Oh, see if I can... Alrighty. Night was looming over the horizon, but I still had thoughts swimming wildly through my head. I had like a feeling of dread that just wouldn't go away. Is there something I'm missing? Echo said to enjoy my summer, but it was a bit hard to do that when everyone around me seemed to be hiding something. Was it all just in my head? Hmm? A text message. I flipped through my phone idly. Was it, f it was from someone I didn't know. Maybe a wrong number. Hey, Gran, don't get angry, but I'm outside Gerani Academy right now. I know I'm not supposed to be out, but I really wanted to check out the school. The problem is, um, I'm kind of locked outside at the moment. And there's this creepy guy following me around campus. I might be going crazy, but it looks like he doesn't have arms or a face. My heart instantly jumped to my throat. No arms or a face? It sounded like the remnant that I saw two days ago. Why was it following this person specifically? Were they important in some way? Whoops. Wrong number. Sorry, that must have been awkward. Just your luck. I'm a student at Gerania. Do you, want me, do you want me to let you inside? It's probably safer than staying out there with a stalker. There was a long pause before the next text. That would be great, actually. I'd love to stay alive. Thanks. I'm sitting at the back entrance. Thanks a bunch, friend. Well, that sounded, well, that's settled, then. I'm on my way. I jumped into my shoes and socks and glanced around the room. Echo, did you hear all that? There was no answer. Echo? Looks like he wasn't here. Where did he run off to? Useless wish, isn't he? What? H Haley? It looks like I'll have to babysit you for tonight. I can't let you run off and get yourself killed. Where's Echo? Why, why do you even care? How should I know where your wish is? I have better things to do. He's probably off on what you mortals call a lunch break. It's night time right now. Haley shrugged dismissively. Time is relative. As for your second question, of course I care. I may loathe everything about you, but you're useless to me dead. Now hurry up and let that person inside. I'll make sure you don't suffer lethal damage along the way. Eh, thanks? Whatever. Better get to that get better get to that better go get that person inside and away from the remnant. If Haley was to be believed, it was probably safer to have her with me than to go alone. Hmm. Looks like that thing is trying to still attach itself to someone. The school felt a bit spookier at night. There was an odd chill in the summer air. Now, where was that person? I hope the remnant hadn't caught up to them. Hello? Are you out there? Oof! Something suddenly slapped across my face, sending me reeling to the ground. What the hell? Oh my gosh, I'm sorry, I thought you were the stalker. Are you alright? I'm fine. You could have given some warning before backhanding me, though. Eh, sorry about that. It's a bit scary out here at night. Here, let me help you up. Thanks. I looked up and instantly froze. Oh. Oh! You. Huh? Uh, sorry, have we met before? My heart was lurching painfully against my chest. Why were tears welling up in my eyes? I didn't even know this person, but it almost felt like I had been reunited with an old friend. The cameras we wore around our necks suddenly kindled into a warm glow. Emotions welled up inside me, and an overwhelming sense of regret enveloped my heart, almost like memories from another lifetime. Hello! Hello! Did I hit your head too hard? You're kind of zoning out. What? Sorry, I don't know what got over me. I rubbed my eyes and shook my head from my thoughts. I felt like a mess. 
As I stumbled back onto my feet, the girl watched me. Oh, the girl, okay. Oh, that was a guy, okay. I thought, it was like a very, I thought it was like a very feminine looking guy, androgynous. The girl watched me like she was holding back a laugh. So you're the guy who's supposed to be rescuing me. Eh, I thought you'd be taller. Or maybe a little more heroic. Hey, would you rather I left you outside? Hey, don't get me wrong, I'm totally grateful. I just figured your bold text, from your bold text that you'd be a little more... Eh, never mind. Anyway, the name's Jenny. It's a pleasure to not be killed by a stalker tonight. I'm Adrian. It's nice to meet you too, I guess. Oh, hey, that's a nice camera. Jenny pointed at the camera hanging from my neck gleefully. I remember buying one just like it forever ago. Are you into photography? Sort of. I kind of just picked photography at Gerani Academy for an easy for an easy grade. That's no way to live. You should try and enjoy it more, especially if you're attending a prestigious school like Gerania. Take tons of photos. It capture every important moment. Life is too short to just let time slip by. Photographs, after all, are just little pieces of time. Little pieces of time. I swear I've heard that somewhere before. Hmm, that reminds me, why are you sneaking onto campus this late at night? People usually try and sneak away from school. You could just come here during visitor hours or so. Could you just come here during visitor hours or something? Ginny gave a mournful sigh and stared up at Gerani Academy's many buildings. You know, I've always wanted to come to school here, but I can't. I'm sort of under house arrest? Well, not actual house arrest, but I'm not allowed to roam around willy-nilly. So you decided to sneak out and go to a school of all places. Hey, some people aren't lucky like you. I've never been in an actual classroom before. What's it like studying here? You know, besides the crazy armless stalkers that follow you at night. Well, there are tranquilizer-wielding teachers with chins that look like shapely, shapely ball sacks. And then there are the cute bunnies and vandal classmates riding skateboards. Besides that, classes are pretty boring. Oh, that sounds wonderful. I can't wait to sneak here more often. Jenny was absolutely giddy as she skipped around the parking lot, taking in every detail around her. What an odd girl. Hmm. She's here. Whoa! Hey, give me some warning before you pop up like that! Haley ignored me, her eyes trained onto Jenny. She was staring at her, barely breathing. Her eyes were wide with what looked like terrified hope. Haley reached out to Jenny, hands shaking violently, as though the world might collapse around her at any moment. Haley, what are you... Can she... Can she see me? <gasps> Jenny suddenly walked right through Haley as though she was made of smoke, not even noticing she was there. Haley fell to her knees. I quickly scrambled to her side. Hey, are you alright? No, I'm not. Haley forced out a deep breath before stumbling back onto her feet. Never mind me. You two should get indoors before your faceless friend finds us. Everyone froze as an eerie laughter echoed throughout the night. Adrian, look over there! There was an unsettling shadow teetering across the parking lot, its joint its legs spasming with each stride. Even its movements felt unnatural and inhumane. That's the thing that's been following me! Wait, you can see it too? But you couldn't see Haley for some reason. Oi, coward, is this really the time to be pondering things? Right, uh, we better head inside. Ginny, follow me! I grabbed the door handle, but it wouldn't budge an inch. Was it locked? No, it felt as though it was unnaturally sealed shut. Yeesh. The remnant approached, its maniacal grin coming into view. The air felt heavy and charged. So my knees gave out and I fell to the floor. My heart was hammering against my chest. I felt so tired as though every inch of my body was weighed down by lead. Adrian, are you alright? Huh? Ginny seemed completely unaffected, looking down at me with concern. Found you. Looks like I'm not crazy. You're actually missing a face. Ginny, stay away from it. It's dangerous. Duh. The remnant suddenly roared, one of its countless eyes snapping open. Its one open eye zeroed onto Jenny. Yeesh. Jittering in a mad dance against its socket. Well, this is quite the eye-opener. In spite of the situation, I couldn't help but groan. Please no, one punny friend is enough. Heh, <laughs> sorry, I couldn't resist. Your memories lay scattered. Can't remember. Your other lifetimes? Pity. Ah, okay. So it's armless, faceless, and crazy. What do you want from us? The first time you came here, Adrian, I finally granted your wish. I finally gave you what you want. Tell me, girl, why did you interfere? And Adrian, why did you return 
to the beginning. So, do you have any idea what it's talking about? I can I can barely understand what it's saying, let alone what it means. It, it looks like it knows your name. Are, are, are you two friends? Hell no, I want nothing to do with it. That's enough talk. I'm putting an end to this. Ooh, the lingering comet still lives. Are you still trying to see him? Try all you like. You cannot bring anything but misfortune. How many more times will you be subject her to your repeated failures? Haley's eye Haley's eyes flared. Suddenly, every electrical fixture in the city glared with blinding light. How many know that's in the entire city? <laughs> Instantly, the sky is bright as day, with light shining from every street lamp, every building. Ginny and I had to cover our eyes to stop ourselves from going blind. The remnant was shrieking with ear-splitting pain, his cries echoing through the night. Jeez. Soon, the light subsided and the remnant was gone, leaving us alone in the night. It looked like it didn't handle bright light too well. Maybe that's why it wasn't moving when I saw it in plain daylight. Haley was knelt over on the ground, burying her face in her hands. Her breathing was reduced to ragged gasps. Haley, are you? You. Take Ginny and bring and bring un bring her inside. I've sealed I've unsealed the door. But leave. Okay, I'll leave. The lights were still out in the lobby. That's a relief. So is this the type is this type of thing normal around here? Ah, yes, it's totally normal to have ghosts and spirit and spirity shit haunt us around ha, ha, blah, haunt us around here. It's a time-honored tradition. I'll take that as a no. Do you believe in ghosts? No, I don't. Dying should be short and sweet, not drawn out like floaty spirits. That can't be very comfortable. We suddenly jumped as footsteps came scrambling our way. Shit, it's her! Uh, hide me! What? Ginny lunged behind a counter as the footsteps drew closer. The footsteps turned to deafening thumps as Miss, Mrs. Coyley's barreled around the corner with a f the fury of a charging rhinoceros. Oh my god. Adrian! Uh, hey, Mrs. Corlys! How you doing? It is one o'clock in the morning, Adrian. Why are you out of bed? I... I... I well... Y you see... Wait a second. Are you wearing a bathrobe? Now that she was up close, it looked like Mrs. Corley scrambled out of bed just moments ago. Her bright yellow crocs gleamed against the floors, her hair curls quivered dangerously from her still wet hair. This image is going to be burned in my mind, isn't it? Instead of questioning my fashion sense, I suggest you explain why you're wandering around campus in the dead of night. Well, you see, this faceless ghost was attacking this poor passerby and did my civil duty to rescue the poor thing. Alright guys and gals, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right here. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and leave a super thanks for a tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye